if you caught last week's video, you may recall that we took a break from the normal hunting out here in the Hunter Classic and went for a classic only rifles hunt and ended up getting a really nice not typical mule deer. And by the way, the drop times from this angle, that was something we really didn't get to see during that hunt. But a thing that happened probably 12 hours after that recording was the addition of skull mounts for a couple new species. And the one that interests me the most is, of course, the Roosevelt Elk. Now, I'm not sure they seem to float whether they are on the little like pedestals or on the wall plaques. I don't know if they intend to add like an, ad an additional thing when you do the skull mounts on these. I think that would be really cool. However, we did get an elk bugle from inside the trophy lodge here. So we gotta get out there and try to locate that. That is going to be the main goal today, trying to get another solid elk for another one of the skull mounts. And maybe we'll mess with the different styles and see what those look like. But I can only assume that if we just kind of head out here and do a little calling, probably we can locate them. And while we really can't know for sure, I can only assume because this guy beagled not far from the lodge, this is probably the one we heard while in the trophy lodge. So running with the cable back bows still, and at least at that angle, elk aren't too bad to fairly consistently drop using that bow. Now we are still working towards a thousand kills with it. I think that would be kill number 442 if I remember the stats correctly. A long way to go, but certainly a lot better than I think the 70 something that we started at a couple months back. Well, this is not what I thought was going to happen. We got a bugle from this guy and he's just basically come all the way into the call and just started feeding here, but yet another solo bull which on one hand can be kind of good if we can drop them in their tracks, because at least that means we're not going to be spooking off any others. The other side of that is though, when we can call in a group, it's the potential to have, you know, three, four, even five bulls, and just better odds of actually running into a good one. So unable to drop that one, the angle was a little bit odd, but I think it's going to be a long shot. And honestly, had we aimed a little bit lower, there probably was an opportunity to slot that into the heart, but. It is a long shot, so he shouldn't be going too awfully far here. And in fact, he really didn't go all that far at all. You can still see the first blood track kind of towards the top half of the hunter mate there. So lung liver or something, I have to assume. Single lung, I'd imagine he would have gone further. So we'll see what this says. It was just right lung. Two minute wound time, I mean a hundred maybe meter track. Not all that bad, but Hopefully going forward, as we've actually kind of gone back towards where we shot the first bull, maybe we can run into some better ones. One thing that has absolutely become clear over the last couple months of trying to get a 400 scoring Roosevelt elk is that this area by this tiny lake on the east side of the map has become one of the best areas for elk. And really ever since they changed up the herds where you could get bulls and cows in the same herds. However, this tends to be about the quality of bulls that we get. 35 to 80, and I think that said 60 to 105, appears to be the best we got. You can hear all kinds of elk walking around, all cows. And I guess if there is a plus side to this, it is that we've called them all in. They've been walking around the base of the tree for probably five, 10 minutes by now. And what we'll probably do with this is try to take this guy. At least we can make that shot with the cable back. And by the way, I think I've said this in, in previous videos, but that has been probably the primary way that I've been able to get a lot of my cable back harvest just by going for those underneath the stand shots. But we'll pick up all these tracks, at least try to know what not to call in later. Because again, since bulls and cows can be in the same herd, just hearing a cow call can be enough to try to call them in and see if any bulls come with them. So we'll get all these identified so that we hopefully do not call in those herds again. And maybe that'll help us towards actually getting a better one. Now we may be on to a little something. 440 to 500 kg is the max weight for Roosevelt Elk. And a new trail. So there's two ways this could go. As we kind of move along here, I want to stay on that trail for a moment. You see all these tracks here that are no doubt from the same herd as the max weight pull. There's also a cow that seems to be by itself. It came in and I just kind of went around it. I don't see any of these tracks lighting up with the current trail, so most likely the bull that we just heard is not with the one that left the max weight track. So what we'll probably do is continue moving forward. He was right at the edge of our render. And as we keep going, 
We'll see if we can get the max weight track again, just so we have it. This guy should be coming in now. We don't really need to worry about his trail as much. But the problem is, as we've clicked off, finding that track again as we go this way might not be the simplest thing. And that may have been a good move. I think this is the one that called. 315 to 360. And if we can make a drop shot here, that would really save us a bunch of time. Now, the thing is, as he's kind of walking into stuff, tough shot, able to make it there with the cable back. And the only way we can know this for absolutely certain is to identify the track and not pick up the bull, which maybe we can do if we kind of look to the left. New trail. So that's not the one that called, nor is it the max weight one. I actually see a little cow over there just kind of peeking up over the hill. So let's not pick this up yet. There are definitely more coming in. That one's not half bad either. Not as big as the one that we just killed, but he's pretty decent, similar frame, 275 to 320. And he is, I'm gonna say again, due to the weight estimate, not the one that we had the track from. Another bolt down to our left. By the way, we are really not that far from the outpost that we started to hunt at again. He is getting ready to spook, but at least we can drop him. And I still think just because of the fact that we never did get a track from the one that originally called, this is probably not the herd that had the max weight bull. It could be, hard to say, but at least based on what I'm seeing here, not incredibly obvious. Now this is a rediscovered trail, one that we apparently had one track of. It could be the max weight one, maybe? It's really unlikely. He's actually too low. It cannot be that one, so I don't know which bull it is. 309 though. And then the bigger one, one sticker here that's gonna hurt, but everything else looks pretty solid. Double lunged him actually, 354. That's a really solid bull, and honestly, like, not one that we were attempting to get at all. That was just a bonus. So we'll try to set something up here if we can. And I really don't like to feel like I'm rushing a trophy shot, but we don't know what else might be coming in, what else is around there. Is that cow that's still coming in? And I also think, at least, that the max weight track that initially got us moving this way, that bull is probably still gaining ground and getting further and further away. So. I don't know where the cow went, it must have went down to the right there. So we're going to go back now and try to uh, get on that track. But neither one of those bulls was even over 440 kg, which would be a requirement to have been the bull that we had a track of, given his weight estimate. So this will be interesting. A couple of 300 plus bulls there. And by the way, I didn't tax those. If we end up not getting anything bigger, the 354 definitely will make a euro amount of for the end. But you never know, we might end up even getting something better than that. And that maybe is the reason that we didn't end up encountering this bull. You can see we still have the track, so neither one of those was him. But it looks like right when we got that last bugle, the track kind of cut off to the right. And that's probably why we never got another track kind of clicking on them as we moved up towards that other one. So good chance then that he's not spooked from anything that just happened. And I would think as long as we keep moving here and call it every now and then, we should be able to get on this one too. Well, in an interesting twist, we are back here at this stand, and one of the bulls that we saw when here the first time, that 35 to 80 score estimate bull, is actually here again, but we have two kind of average ones. They actually have the same score estimate of 140 to 185, and then I believe the one that we got the track of coming in there at the back with a solid frame, 275 to 320, but you see the weight estimate, 460 to 490. My guess is that's the one. And we'll just kind of sit here and try to bring him in the rest of the way, but go figure. We end up basically tracking, I think we can see on the map, more or less tracking right up to the base of this stand. He walked right through here and then headed up into the mountains. And fortunately, we were able to call him back in, actually because a different one bugled. I didn't know he was going to be coming in, but it was kind of a shot in the dark. The tracks were like 20 minutes old. Figured it was worth a try, so... Probably gonna need him to take a few more steps. I wonder if all these cows are the same ones as well. I wouldn't be shocked. But I do want to say, despite the one short time there, decent odds we've got our third 300 plus bull really kind of from the same area. It was due to that track that we got onto this guy to begin with. He kind of, I probably shouldn't have taken that shot while he was walking in place. Ended up sort of shifting a little bit and our shot got 
kind of down to the side of the spine and into a lung, but much like the last one that was single lunged, he shouldn't be going incredibly far. Cable back bow skill level 12, by the way, not bad. So let's go ahead and pick that up, and we'll kind of head up into that area, and it got a little bit chaotic when there were two 300 plus bowls coming into the same spot where we got our 350, but one thing that I've been wanting to mention with these skull mounts, and particularly with the elk skull mounts and hopefully future deer skull mounts and stuff like that, ones with antlers I guess is what I'm getting at, I think that's really going to allow a lot of options when it comes to customizing our trophy lodges. There were three other new species, I think it's polar bear, grizzly bear, and wild boar, but antlered skull mounts, I think it's just going to allow us to do so much more with the already existing space in the lodges, so that's super cool. I don't know that we're going to be doing a bunch of euro mounts with the bulls we get today, but I guess we could just to kind of show what it could look like. But anyway, after what was a pretty slow start, our third really solid bull down, just, I mean, you can see it's just to the right of the spine there. You can kind of see like the lighter fur, there's a line that really runs right along the spine. But anyway, that guy left lung at 6 meters, obviously 310, making him our second biggest bull of the hunt, so not a bad deal. Don't think we'll trophy shot that one either, considering we're on the side of the hill, but it is 9 o'clock in game now. I, th I mean, we really haven't gone anywhere. As you can see, we've just been going in circles, tracking stuff, all that. I think what we'll do is I want to get up into here before we're done. So maybe we'll just fast travel to here and kind of come back this way. I like that idea. It's a little bit different than our normal strategy. So let's see if that ends up with any different results. We also are in... Hey, that actually kind of worked out. We also are in a blacktail competition. It's, I think, one that we were in not long ago. Uh, your lowest scoring blacktail buck is your entry. And there's blacktail in this area, so we could maybe kind of kill two birds with one stone here. It is getting incredibly tempting to just make your amounts out of what is now the four bulls that we've had with really solid frames and just try to kind of see what that's like in the lodge. Strongly considering it, although it'll be fairly expensive GM-wise, as far as I know, the costs for a skull mount versus like the full body or a shoulder mount are all the same. If it was cheaper to just do the skull mount, I'd really strongly consider that. We just did the exact same thing again, so I have to do a little bit of tracking. But I think that could be a cool thing to kind of compare them. If they didn't have the... oh, maybe we got liver that time? because he went nowhere, but if they didn't have the kind of floating aspect right now, that would definitely be something I'd like to do. I still kind of hope that they're intending on adding another piece that attaches to the pedestal or the plaque that the skull kind of rests on. That is something you'll see often done in real life, and maybe that's why they float away from the surface that they're supposed to be on right now. But what is now going to be our fourth bull over 270 anyway, this guy I think had a max of 285. Again, with the start that we are having, struggling to even top 200, this is certainly a welcome sight, even though he will be our fourth best bull. That was long liver, 271, so barely our fourth over 270, but he did indeed eclipse that number. And yeah, we'll try to, I think, kind of go up and around like this, and then head south. I swear, this happens once per hunt on Red Feather. We always have a cow moose that walks right to us with no calling and decides to charge us. At least we've shot something that's not an elk today. Hard shot, which, again, interesting we can do that no problem with the cable back, but struggled from a stand in a more controlled environment with the elk. But anyway, not a whole lot going on up here in these mountains as we head kind of towards this little chunk of the map, which tends to be good for blacktail and elk specifically. So I'm hoping to encounter something down there Maybe other than a charging moose. That entire area really did not end up panning out, and I've actually ended up fast traveling again to a spot that sometimes has elk, but often has whitetail or blacktail, and we do have a whitetail buck coming in, so this time at least, we can make that drop shot, and my best guess is that probably the elk are maybe starting to rest a bit now. So we'll grab our whitetail buck real quick and see. That time we got spine 1, 107 score. And I think what we'll actually do is hunt our way back to the lodge. I do think we're actually going to go ahead and make a couple euro mounts out of the bulls that we shot today. And we do have the one old one, so we could not do the 271 and still end up with 4 over 300. So I think that's going to be the move. 
if we can stumble into an elk or another buck or something on our way back to the lodge, that would be great because we did just fast travel. We can't actually jump over the lodge anyway. And we'll see where that gets us. And as we approach the door of the trophy lodge, I think I've just learned some rather disappointing information. I went into the statistics to go ahead and taximize our elk, and you don't get the option of doing the skull mouse. So I think the only thing we can do is take a look back at this one. I'll maybe see if I can come up with a different way to do it, but best I can tell, you're kind of forced into just the full body or shoulder mounts. Unfortunately, it does appear as though from the stats page, we can't actually choose to do the skull mounts, so that's a bit of a bummer. I would have loved to have at least gotten that 350 mounted. I mean, this guy here is 375, very similar frame, just but with one extra back time and a couple of stickers. So it would have been something like that, but obviously on the skull. Now, I went to single player just to be able to switch it up. We can at least check out the styles. So there's the natural that obviously doesn't have like the nice bleach effect. There is the decorated, which to be honest on an elk skull doesn't look too bad. And then we have back to the bleach. So there's the three options there. I really wanted to have them all up there. Had I known that or considered that, I would have just mounted them as we went along, but I guess if there is one plus, it saved us some EM over GM by not taxing them all. So I guess in the future, now we know that if we want to do a skull mount, that will have to do from the uh, harvest screen. But I will say, hopefully down the road, we see a black tail, mule deer, white tail. Honestly, the idea of doing a euro mount on maybe like a slightly smaller knot tip or even a big one, and then having those placed on, you know, the little spots like this. I just think that adds so much more potential for these lodges. And the other thing that I'm really looking forward to, we can actually move things around now because we are in single player. So I think it's the small plaques where the uh, skull mouse goes. So if I can go to the small round platform, take this down, they, now I'm not 100% sure, but I think because this is a small plaque here, we can throw that access deal we shot for the Summer Fiesta missions on here right now. Something has happened. I can't move our elk skull mount at all. But I know we put it up here during the stream where we shot that initially. So I think the skull mounts can also go on like the smaller plaques. So maybe there's something going on with them. I'm going to see if I can find anything out. And if I can, and if we can still end up doing the skull mounts for the bulls that we shot, we'll have them in here. But worst case, at least, you know, nothing was like 400 plus that we can't tax. And honestly, a 400 plus we do in the normal way anyway. But I am looking forward to that, especially going forward. You know, 180 whitetail, stuff like that. Maybe rather than a rabbit in these positions, we could have a skull mount eventually, assuming those species get them going forward. But even with the elk, I think it's going to be cool whenever that's fixed and we can place it again because as of now, I don't think we can. But anyway... That was a really solid hunt out here on Red Feather. Three bulls over 300, another in the 270s. And yeah, I mean, a 350 bull, especially when just trying to make some skull mounts, definitely a really big plus. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.